Today I'm going to give away a free t-shirt, bring you a Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown fight, bring you comics news, and reveal the books I bought this week. How y'all doing? I'm Victor, and you are watching the Comic Hero Show. Now kick that logo! edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host Victor Nelly and I am the Comic Hero. Still Mardi Gras season folks and uh, let me tell you a little bit more about Mardi Gras season. Now it wouldn't be Mardi Gras season without the parades. Now there are a lot of parades here in Louisiana. Um, when they first started having Mardi Gras parades it was mostly in New Orleans and then it spread to other parts of South Louisiana and then about 30 years ago it finally came up here to North Louisiana. And uh, this Saturday is the Crew of Centaur Parade, and then the week after that is the Crew of Gemini. And um, now, the parades um, kind of vary in uh, different cities. It, de it depends on how many people, uh, well, really the size of the city. Like, cities like New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport, their parades are pretty big. They always have a, a huge turnout of folks. And then, there are some, some parades that are rather small. Those, those are in towns like um, Minden and Farmerville. And oh, in Monroe, they have a, they had the Crew of Janice Parade last Saturday. And um, from my understanding, it was quite the turnout. In next week's episode, I'm gonna tell you something about the delicacies or the food of Mardi Gras. But for right now, it's time to give away a free t-shirt. Last week's episode, I asked, what is the name of the comic book company that was founded by a coalition of African-American writers and artists? Well, the correct answer is Milestone Comics. Now, this was founded because there were some African-American writers and artists who didn't believe that um, they got the, um, the due diligence nor the um, that they deserved, and, and there, were a, there were a lack of, uh, of um, African-American comic book characters. So they went on ahead and founded their um, founded their own company, and it lasted for four years. It was around from 1993 to 1997. It became defunct in '97, but uh, DC ended up acquiring the rights to the characters and uh, the universe they were in. And um, the, the universe they were in was called the Dakotaverse. Um, now, um, two of the um, the founders of Milestone Comics were Dennis Cowan and the late, great Dwayne McDuffie, who were, I mean, that, who, who excelled both, um, that, who, that excelled in both the, the comics and uh, the TV series. One of their biggest achievements, Static Shock. Well, five people have answered correctly, and because they've answered correctly, your names have been entered in a drawing for a free tea, and that drawing takes place right now. So, the winner of the free tea for this week's episode of the show is... Sheena Whittle from New Iberia, Louisiana. So congratulations, Sheena. You win yourself a free comic hero team. All right, here's the question for next week's episode, and this is another black history question. True or false? Black Lightning was originally created for Super Friends. Everyone who answers correctly be in a drawing for a free team for next week's episode of the show. So, I gotta ask, any questions? Questions I walk around in. Questions. All right, I have one question for this week, and it's from Mandy Hooter from Bossier City, Louisiana. She asked, I thought I knew how Wonder Woman was created. She is the daughter of Zeus, not created from clay, I thought. Or is there another version of her birth out there I haven't read? Well, Mandy, um, to answer this, I would have to go all the way back to when Wonder Woman was created by William Moulton Marston. Now, in 1941, when he created it, his, her origin was that she was born of clay. And um, DC stood, um, stood by that, that origin all the way through 2011. However, in um, 1987, 
there was a new Wonder Woman series that came out that was written and drawn by George Perez, where he wrote that the only the only the only difference uh, with that one is that she was given he just gave her one power one more power and that was flight. Um, now uh, the other version of Wonder Woman that you're you're thinking of is Nubia. Now Nubia um, made her debut in issue of Wonder Woman back in 1973, and she was. Uh, created to for the sole purpose of being Wonder Woman's long-lost twin sister that her mother Hipp Hippolyta did not tell her about. Um, and they used her all the way from then until um, Crisis on Infinite Earths that which started in 1985. Now, after 1987, when George Perez came out, I mean, um, did Wonder Woman, um, Nubia didn't see a light of day again until 1999. And um, she was also told to be Wonder Woman's uh, twin sister made out of clay that, that she was kept in the dark about. Um, now, after 2011, when they retooled everything and uh, retold Wonder Woman's origin that she was the biological daughter of Hippolyta and Zeus, um, Nubia had seen the light of day. As a matter of fact, there was a there was one character, the only character that was born of clay was Donna Troy, when and they retold her origin. Um, but then that that origin of Donna Troy was pretty much washed out thanks to the events of Rebirth because Rebirth pretty much combined elements of the original DC universe with elements of the um, the New Fifty Two. Because there were some things in New 52 that worked, and there were uh, and there were several other things that didn't. So DC, when they did Rebirth, they pretty much uh, got rid of the things that didn't work and kept the things that did. And uh, Donna Troy's uh, origin of how she came to be, um, well, they 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 rather they used the one from the original DC universe and not that one. Now as for Nubia. Um, I don't know if they're going to um, write that in because right after the events of Rebirth Wonder Woman found out that she had a twin brother named Jason who she actually fought alongside um, a, until almost a year ago and um, if they re, if they do bring Nubia back to the DC Universe it'll probably, they'll probably retell her version I mean, her origin because now that you know, DC decided to stick with the um, with Wonder Lo with the uh, version of Wonder Woman being the biological daughter of Hippolyta and Zeus. If they were to um, reintroduce Nubia, they they would have to um, she would have to have a similar origin. But would I like to see Nubia in 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 in, uh, in, in the DC universe? Absolutely. I mean, a black version of Wonder Woman. How can you go wrong? that you, you just can't that's a good question Mandy um, if you have any questions you want to ask uh, keep them coming I mean I, I really love when y'all pick my brain about this kind of stuff because I mean it, it's fun it's fun for y'all to do that and it's fun for me to, um, to to look up some things because there are some things I know and there's some things I don't and I love learning and not just about comics, but about a lot of stuff. All right, now, D'Angelo Balloon from Youngstown, Ohio, has requested a Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown fight, and this one features two telepathic... Ooh, I can't say that word. Two telepathic bosses in the same universe. Representing Marvel, we have Franklin Richards, and also representing Marvel, we have Mr. M. These two are going to duke it out. In a segment I like to call... The, the Comic, Comic Hero, Hero Throwdown, Throwdown Showdown. Welcome to the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Today, it's Franklin Richards versus Mr. M. Franklin Richards possesses matter of energy manipulation, energy projection, psionic abilities such as telekinesis, telepathy, astral projection, and precognition. He also possesses teleportation, immortality, and pocket universe creation. Mr. M possesses psionic manipulation of energy and matter on a subatomic level, energy projection, telekinesis, and telepathy. 
Who would win? Mysterio would use his full arsenal of powers on Franklin, but the latter would block every attack thanks to his precognition. Franklin would then shut his mind off to Mr. M and create an assortment of astral projections around him. Mr. M would attack each one before Franklin sends him to an inescapable pocket dimension. Franklin Richards wins. And that concludes this fight on the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed that fight. If you have five requests for future episodes, contact info is down there. Alright folks, it's time for Comically Speaking, so without further ado, let's talk comics! Alright, there are four things we're going to talk about in this segment of Comically Speaking. The first one is the news of Luke Cage wielding one of Thor's hammers in the miniseries War of the Realms that's coming this summer for Marvel. Now, War of the Realms is a miniseries where um, Malekith the Accursed leads his uh, leads his army uh, from, from the realm of Jotunheim to Earth to, for a divide and conquer mission. And um, it's going to involve... Now, is it a Thor miniseries or is it a Marvel miniseries? It's both. It's not just going to involve Thor or any um, Thor-related characters. It's also going to involve every powerful character in the Marvel Universe. And Luke Cage is no exception. Now, as far as him wielding one of Thor's hammers, honestly, it's about Tom. I mean, I've always... I mean, when you think about it, Cage wielding Mjolnir would be a good idea because I've always thought of him to be to be one of the most worthy characters in the Marvel Universe. I mean, yeah, he's a little rough around the edges. He he has a I mean, he there are certain issues there are certain books that I've read uh, where Luke Cage is, has a mouth that's even that, that's so potty that it makes Andrew Dice Clay look like a, a, a priest. But um, other than that, he's very I mean it, it, I don't see why he couldn't wheel me on here. I think I think he'd be great at it. But um, as far as wielding any of Thor's hammer, now Thor at this point still is still isn't worthy of wielding me on here. He hasn't ever since the the uh, miniseries entitled Original Sin. Um, he's actually had hammers that were uh, created that were that were actually made uh, for him um, as of the the current. During, at the beginning of the, the current Thor series. Now you're probably wondering what happened to um, Mjolnir. Well, Mjolnir um, was actually destroyed by the, the former Thor, Dr. Jane Foster, uh, because if she had not had done that, then Mangog would have killed everyone. And that's who she went up against. She went up against Mangog. She threw the, um, the hammer into the, into the sun, saved everything. Uh, destroyed Mangog in the process and saved everyone. Um, but let's say, for example, some somehow, some way, Mjolnir did come back and Luke Cage wielded it, or or he was able to pick it up. It's on. That would make him the most powerful character in the Marvel Universe, hands down. I mean, we already know what he can do in terms of his powers. I mean, having unbreakable skin and then, and then just beating the snot out of folks. Just imagine what he could do with an Asgardian weapon. Woo! All right, now the second thing is the news that Lori Petty has been named as a guest at GeekCon later this summer. Now, uh, Lori Petty, she has been in movies like Free Willy and Poetic Justice, but her real claim to fame is starring the lead role of the movie Tank Girl. Now, Tank Girl is a comic book movie that came out back in the 90s, and she really delivered in that. And hopefully I'll try to get an interview with her. I mean, I'll, I'll, I, I really love uh, actors and actresses who, um, who do well in, in comic book movies, and, and she's no exception. All right, now the, the, the third thing is the news that Trish Stratus former WWE Diva and WWE Women's Champion is has been named as a guest at GeekCon. Now, she started out as a heel, 
But then over time, she became a face. Now a heel is um, a, a heel is a bad guy, it, and um, a face is a good guy. Is a good is a good guy. And Trish Stratus became a a, a good a good wrestler um, at the end of her WWE career, and um, she's well loved by by wrestling fans all throughout the country. And um, can't wait to meet her at Geekcon. I'm, I may get an interview with her. I still haven't decided. All right, now the last thing. Now there has been a conspiracy theory, thanks to some uh, posters and um, of, of Avengers Endgame, that um, Mark Ruffalo will be playing Professor Hulk. Now keep in mind. Um, now you're probably wondering who's Professor Hulk. Well, Professor Hulk is pretty much a combination of Dr. Bruce Banner and the Hulk. You know, you have the it's, I mean, it's pretty much the, the Hulk's brawn and uh, Banner's brains all rolled in one, which makes him like the ultimate Hulk. Um, if it is, it would make sense because that was the Hulk that was present during um, the Infinity Gauntlet, which uh, both Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame is loosely, are, are both loosely um, based on. So, if that's the case, awesome. And then that and that makes Avengers Endgame even. I mean, I, that makes me not be able to stand the weight anymore. I mean, April just can't come any sooner. All right, that's it for comically speaking. Now it's time to get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. All right, first up is Wonder Twins number one. Titans number 34. Wonder Woman number 64. Thor number 10. Superman number 8. Supergirl number 27. The Flash number 64. Detective Comics number 998. The Amazing Spider Man number 15. Champions number 1. Champions number 2. Captain Marvel number two. Avengers No Road Home number one. Exiles number 11. Exiles number 12. Venom number nine. Venom number ten. Deadpool number eight. Deadpool number nine.
Peter Parker to Spectacular Spider-Man number 310. Peter Parker to Spectacular Spider-Man number 311. Peter Parker to Spectacular Spider-Man number 312. Black Panther number six. Black Panther number seven. Black Panther number eight. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number two. Guardians of the Galaxy number five. Venom Annual number one. And finally, Batman Annual number three. All right, that's 27. Or 29, rather, which brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997 to 9,192. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Here's a question again for a free tea for next week's episode of the show True or false? Black Lightning was originally created for the Super Friends. Everyone who answers correctly been entered in the drawing for a free tea in next week's episode of the show. And congratulations to Sheena Whittle from New Iberia, Louisiana, who won a free tea in this week's episode of the show. All right, there was one thing I forgot to mention at the very beginning. This is a gold Mardi Gras comic era tea that I'm wearing. Now, gold in the colors of Mardi Gras represents power. Now, last week's episode, I told you that green represents faith. Um, next week's episode, which will be the last Mardi Gras episode of the show, I'm going to be wearing um, a purple Mardi Gras comic hero tee. Now, purple represents justice. So, pretty much, if you keep the faith, then you gain the power to bring justice to evil. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Sounds like a superhero. Makes me want to create a superhero with the Mardi Gras colors. Uh, but anyway, um, was me buying Detective Comics number 998 two issues away from the milestone 1,000th issue of Detective Comics that's coming at the end of next month. And uh, just as I mentioned in earlier episodes of the show, um, when that day comes, when copies of the 1,000th issue of Detective Comics comes out, I'm going to do a Batman episode. In other words, um, on the desk, you know, usually you see all the um, all these action figures and several others. Well, when I do that episode, it's going to be nothing but Batman-related characters on this table. Um, so far today, I bought I bought one, and, and uh, I'm going to slowly end up buying um, plenty of more um, Batman-related characters. Not just Batman. I mean, it, it, I mean. Other characters like Robin, Catwoman, uh, Professor Pig, Joker. Well, definitely Joker. I mean, Batman wouldn't be the same without the Joker. Let's just be real. Um, Louisiana Comic Con coming up at, um, uh, next month. I'm definitely going to that. And, uh, um, can't wait. I'm like Bart Scott. Can't wait! Alright, I'm Victor Nelly on the comic here. I'll see you next week for episode 245. So until then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero!